If you ever wanted to learn how to build a discounted cash flow or DCF model, today is your lucky day. It's my lucky day! Feel free to download this model, build it along with me. There is a link in the description. There's also a list of definitions in the tab to the far right. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them into the comments. So let's rock. So we're gonna build all of this out together. And we have our input information right here. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is figure out what are the trends and patterns that are going on right here. So let's take a look at revenue growth. I just do equals 2022 divided by 2021 minus one, I get 10%. I carry that over with control R. It seems to me that it's fairly reasonable to use a 10% revenue growth rate. Carry that across with control R. So let me build out the revenue equals last year's times one plus the revenue growth rate. Boom. Carry that across with control R, the F9 to update it, all good. EBITDA margin, EBITDA divided by sales. Carry that across to the right. Looks like 20 is a good number to go with. Type in 20 equals to the left. Carry that across, control R. DNA or depreciation and amortization as a percentage of revenue. Uh, this is basically the non-cash expensing of property, plant and equipment. So it looks to me like 5% is a good number to go with. Now that I've done this, I could actually do shift down arrow, hold control and hit D to fill down. CapEx or capital expenditures, those are additions to property, plant and equipment. I'm gonna do CapEx divided by sales here. Carry that across. It looks like 15 is a good number to go with. So we're gonna carry that down. It's basically just linking everything to the left here. Operating working capital. So operating working capital is basically current assets excluding cash minus current liabilities excluding short-term debt. You can think about this as accounts receivable, inventory, and accounts payable. So let's take a look here. Operating working capital. The balance sheet item. We have 2% of sales. Okay. So I think that's a fairly reasonable number to go with. Excel starts getting smart and says, all right, bro, we can uh, bring that. And now that we have sales done, I can go ahead and calculate everything that is built off of sales. So EBITDA, 20% of sales. DNA, 5% of sales. Carry that across, control R. CapEx, 15%. Time sales, carry that across, control R. Now, operating working capital, what we're calculating here is the balance sheet item. What we're going to have to do is calculate the cash flow. That's what's going to go into our DCF model. So first things first, operating working capital, 2%, times sales, control R. And just real quick here, guys, we see that it's minus 11, minus 10. Uh, I would take this formula and pull it across to confirm that this is correct. It is. So basically we have an increase in an asset, increase in an asset. Think if you bought a car, if you buy a car, your assets go up, but your cash flow goes down. So this is a cash outflow. Anytime you see an increase in a net asset item, which is what this is. So I'm going to carry that across, hit F9, rock and roll. And now a word from our sponsors. Hey guys, if you're liking this model, please don't forget to smash that like button. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna go all the way up top here and we're going to bring those numbers up into this area here. I'm gonna show you some cool tips and tricks in order to do that. So I hit page down, I come to the bottom, control shift right arrow, control C, I hit page up, and then I do alt ES, and then L for copy paste special link. So it drops everything there. Next, I'm going to go back. I'm gonna trace the link by holding control and hitting left bracket. And then I do control shift right arrow, control C, Hit F5, enter, Alt, E, S, L. So now we have the EBITDA, Control, left bracket. We have the DNA, Control, shift, right arrow, Control, C, F5, enter, Alt, E, S, L. All right, so EBIT, very simply, is going to be EBITDA minus DNA. Carry that across with Control, R. I'm gonna do you a solid and put some formula text here so you can see exactly what's in these respective formulas. Add back DNA, just do equals, DNA, carry that across, control R. Now this is key, it says changes in working capital cash flow. So we need the cash flow. And also it says changes, so that should kind of be a little bit of a giveaway. 
So we need the changes in working capital cash flow. That's right here. All right, we don't have the 2021 number, which is fine. So we go from 2022 to 2028. Control C, Alt DSL, boom. Unlevered taxes. Okay, so quick discussion here with unlevered taxes. What we're gonna have to do is calculate taxes off of EBIT. So we don't have interest. This is an unlevered free cash flow model, hence a DCF model. So we're gonna to have to calculate the taxes off of EBIT. Now, this tax rate is going to be lower than what we're gonna use for the weighted average cost of capital. We're gonna use this effective tax rate, F4 times EBIT. All right, carry that across. Control R, F9. All right, cooking with gas. Pull that down, Control D. All right. CapEx, we already did that calculation down below. So let's go grab that, Control C, F5, Enter, Alt, E, S, L. All right, all good. So now we have the undiscounted annual cash flow. All right, so I'm gonna calculate it here. We don't need to do it for 2021. So we have EBIT plus TNA plus the changes in working capital because that's the actual cash flow minus taxes minus CapEx. So we carry that across, control R, F9. Now what we have to do is calculate what's called the terminal value. The terminal value is the value from here all the way out to infinity. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this terminal cash flow, we're gonna multiply it by one plus the perpetuity growth rate, which is right here. And then we have to divide it by WAC minus the perpetuity growth rate. So let's go calculate WAC. WAC is the weighted average cost of capital that is the discount rate that we're going to use to discount the cash flows. So we're going to grab the risk-free rate, the beta, which is a measure of risk, that is one, EMRP, equity market risk premium, that is the risk of investing in the market. In this case, we're going to say the United States of America. So risk-free rate plus beta times the market risk premium. So again, I'll do a solid drop a formula text there. So we got nine and a half percent cost of equity, yield on current debt, that's synonymous with the cost of debt, the fiscal tax rate, which is a higher tax rate, that's the actual rate that is paid on pre-tax income. So we have that minus one minus that. Grab the formula text here, control C, control V, F9 that. Weighted average cost of capital is going to be cost of equity times the weight of equity. And if we look right here, the equity weight is 65% plus the post-tax cost of debt times the weight of debt 35% so we have 7.75 all right rocking and rolling here so total undiscounted cash flow i hit f9 and this updates okay so again this is going to be the terminal cash flow times one plus the terminal growth rate divided by WAC minus the terminal growth rate and i'll just pull down the formula text here so that you guys could see it i'll also lock this freeze panes alt wff so next we have the total undiscounted free cash flows. Now, this is very important. We're only looking at the projections. So we're looking at 2024, 2028. I just copied and pasted that. And now we need to calculate the discount factor. The discount factor is time value of money. It's the value of these future cash flows uh, in today's dollar terms. So we do one divided by one plus the weighted average cost of capital right here to the power of T. All right, so we get 0.93. I have to lock it onto the WAC down there, the 7.75. So what this means is a dollar a year from now is worth 93 cents today. And obviously it decreases moving forward. We multiply out the undiscounted cash flows. So we're discounting them. This is very important, the sum of these is going to give us the total enterprise value. So the next thing that we need to grab is the debt, which is down here. So we see that the debt is a thousand. We also have to grab the cash, cash is 750. So the equity value is going to be equals enterprise value minus debt plus cash. The number of shares is provided Let's go grab that at 100. So we have equity value divided by number of shares, 27 spot 17. So the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a sensitivity analysis, which is a data table. So you always want to have the center center numbers match whatever is in the model. 
So the first thing that we have is the perpetuity growth rate. That's 2.5%. It's also very important, everybody, that you make sure that you do not link it, you hard code it. I'm just gonna do plus 0.5%, control R, minus 0.5%, control C, control V. What are we trying to put in the output here? The output is going to be the actual implied share price. So that is what we have to link. Now the weighted average cost of the capital, we're gonna to have to put that in the center number up top. I'll just pop that formula there if you need to catch up. So I'm gonna do F2, F9 to confirm that it's 7.75%. It's not rounded, it's exactly 7.75%. So if I was not sure of what it was, I could always just copy it, Control C, and then do Alt ESV for copy paste special value. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this in such a way that we have the best answers here, which means that we're going to do minus 0.5% and then we'll do plus 0.5%. Control C, Control V, bam. Now, Control Shift right and down, Alt, D for data, T for table. All right, the row input cell, that's whatever is going across the top. So what is going across the top? That would be the perpetuity growth rate. So I go down to there, 2.5%. Tab, what is the column input cell? That is the weighted average cost of capital or the WAC, 7.75%. I hit enter. I have to hit F9 a few times for it to calculate through. And what do we see? We see 2717 as the center center number. That also happens to be the center center number there. Um, so that is basically it. Uh, start to finish. Thank you for joining me. If you really liked it, uh, I would recommend checking out both my Tesla model, which you can find here, and my Starbucks model, which you can find here. And if you have any questions, pop them into the chat. Otherwise, thanks for joining and have a great day, guys. Be relentless.